If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Hi, I'm Christina. And I'm Randy. Are you ready for an adventure? Come see our journey today at the Richard Nixon Museum and Library. Whether you like him or not. <laughs> Using downtown Los Angeles as a reference point, it takes about 50 minutes to reach the Richard Nixon Library in Yorba Linda, California. In our case, we traveled through Pasadena to the 210 freeway to the 57 south and got off at Yorba Linda Boulevard exit. If you are at Disneyland, it's only 11 miles away or about 20 minutes. Richard Nixon was the 37th president of the United States of America. It's open seven days a week. And today we're going to learn some things about Richard Nixon. Whether you like him or not. <laughs> it's a presidential library and burial site for Richard Nixon, 37th President of the United States. Instead of being able to go on Air Force One, they've got a, a model of an Air Force One. Southern California has two presidential libraries. One is Richard Nixon's and the other one is Ronald Reagan's. The Nixon Library is located in Yorba Linda, California on land that President Nixon's family once owned. The library sits on nine acres. It is jointly operated by the National Archives and the Richard Nixon Foundation. The Watergate scandal broke wide open today. The president has a responsibility to defend this office, which I shall continue to do. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Determined to increase the number of women in senior positions around the government. Assistance to black colleges. Assistance to minority businesses. He created OSHA. He had the first welfare reform legislation. Southern schools were desegregated under Richard Nixon to a degree that dwarfed anything before him. He really feels that Native Americans have been treated very unfairly in this country and he wants to do something about it. For 700 years, Taos Pueblo Indians worshipped in this place and we restore this place of worship to them for all the years to come. In an uncanny sense of what the American people were thinking. And at the end of his first term, the American people had rewarded him with a 49 state landslide. Historically, all presidential papers were at one time considered the personal property of the president. Some presidents took them at the end of their term, while others destroyed them. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the first to make them available to the public when he donated them to the National Archives. The Watergate scandal and Richard Nixon's subsequent resignation from office complicated the issue. In September of 1974, Richard Nixon made an agreement with the head of General Services Administration to turn over most of the materials from his presidency. There are many recordings and audiovisual materials available in this library. And then we're going to go right into a replica of the Oval Office during the Nixon administration. Presidents can furnish the Oval Office in any manner that they choose and there are many things that they can put into the Oval Office. If you look at Richard Nixon's Oval Office it's very simple and very plain especially in comparison with other presidents. The resolute desk that is used by the current presidents was not used by Richard Nixon as at that time it was in the Smithsonian Institute. Take that call. Who are you going to call? <laughs> this Oval Office is set up just as it was when Richard Nixon was president from 1969 to 1974. That's Madam President. We were surprised to see that they give you full access to the office and desk and phone. Is that 
in the Oval Office desk drawers. The president kept both personal items, the glasses, the pen used to sign a bill into law, and items to give to visitors, like the souvenir of the gold coin and the presidential seal box. That's a really pretty presidential seal box. Actually, let you touch things in the in the office. <laughs> the war in Vietnam played a big part in President Nixon's term in office. The war in Vietnam started November the first, 1955. Nixon ended American involvement in Vietnam combat in 1973 and the military draft with it that same year. The agreement on ending the war, restoring peace in Vietnam. And the pin. Channel. You had to change the channel like that. <laughs> okay. Pull on and volume. Yeah, I, had, I, I used to have a TV just like that. Yeah. <laughs> On July the 20th, 1969, President Nixon made a call with this green phone to speak to Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon. This is the original phone along with astronaut food and a space rock on loan from NASA. And we can pick up and listen to that conversation on another green phone in the case right next to it. This has to be the proudest day of our lives and for people all over the world. I am sure that they too join with Americans in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done. And one in our prayers that you will return safely to earth. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and a base of all nations curiosity and, and with the vision for the future. Uh, honor for us to be able to participate here today. <laughs> I, did, I didn't realize that they're standing there looking down at you. <laughs> they're on the moon. things all over the place. They were shouting, waving, cheering, and making me feel very... You take this off, and if you want to see when she went to South Vietnam, you put it here, and then it comes up that she flew to South Vietnam. Mrs. Nixon accompanied then, her husband to Vietnam Day. Sure. The first time that the first like been in a combat region since the late Eleanor Roosevelt. She went by helicopter from Saigon to an orphanage in nearby Tuduk. It's hard to see. 
Mrs. Nixon has been seeing an average of It's really hard to see that. <laughs> I know. They also have a piece of the Berlin Wall here. Well, that's pretty cool. Nixon met directly with Elvis Presley in the Oval Office after receiving a personal letter from him. The letter read, Dear Mr. President, First I would like to introduce myself. I am Elvis Presley and admire you and have great respect for your office. I talked to Vice President Agnew in Palm Springs three weeks ago and expressed my concern for our country. The drug culture, hippie elements, the 8PS, Black Panther, etc. do not connect me as their enemy, or as they call it, the establishment. I call it American. The archive collection in this library contains 46 million pages of Textual records, 6,900 sound recordings, 5,110 films, 5,650 record video recordings, and 500,000 photos. There is also more than 300 artifacts on display. Richard Nixon wanted every inch of his presidency to be documented and recorded for history. Those recordings also became his demise. All are on display here, good or bad, for all to judge. I'm at the, I'm at the Wall of China with Richard Nixon. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There. This was a gift from the Chinese government. We had no relations with China for 25 years before Nixon's visit. Nixon restored relations and opened China to the world with his groundbreaking visit to Beijing in 1972. He issued a communique with the Premier of China that would guide relations for decades to follow. That is the week that, that is the week that changed the world. Changed the world as we know it. Live pictures of Nixon walking on the Great Wall of China these things went on for eight days. At the end of the visit, they released something called the Shanghai Community, and it was a statement of friendship between the United States and China. But it was also a statement of where they disagreed. This Chinese art symbolizes power and strength. These are the image of the galloping horses made out of jade. There are many artifacts on display. From all over the world. From all the people that visited the United States. He was re-elected for a second term with a historic electoral landslide in 1972 when he defeated George McGovern and won 49 states. That's how many states the Democrat McGovern won. Two.
road to resignation with the Watergate timeline. It's a whole room dedicated to it. The gallery was designed to help today's visitors make sense of the web of personalities and actions and intentions at the heart of the story. Gap matter. The gap means that it was erased. The gap is because it got erased. And you can listen to it right on there. Buzzing and clicking. Buzzing and clicking, yes. Nixon resigned from the presidency in 1974, citing the loss of political support because of Watergate, and returned home to La Casa Pacifica in San Clemente, California. You were here to try to say goodbye to us. And they released the And uh, we don't have a good word for it in English. Uh, the best is au revoir. We'll see you again. Because the greatness comes not when things go always good for you, but the greatness comes and you're really tested. When you take some knocks, some disappointments, when sadness comes, because only if you've been in the deepest valley can you ever know how magnificent it is to be on the highest mountain. His last trip. It's his last trip away from the White House. Now we see the President Lincoln accompanied by it. Vice President Jared Bullard, who will become the 38th President of the United States, and home today is why Betty Bullard, the guard of honor, let's go. Nixon resigned the presidency on August 9th of 1974 and returned to his family home in San Clemente, California. He was greeted at the El Toro Marine Base Air Station by thousands of lo local supporters, but this homecoming marked the beginning of one of the darkest and most difficult chapters of his life. As time has compared with the other crisis I've endured, I could see no reason to live, no cause to fight for, so unless a person has a reason to live other than himself, he will die. First mentally, then emotionally, then physically. Those who hate you don't win, unless you hate them. And then you destroy yourself. Behind the museum is the birthplace, which was constructed by Nixon's father, using a home building kit and restored to appear as it was in the 1910s. President Nixon and Pat Nixon are buried on the grounds as well, just a few feet from the birthplace. Now we'll enjoy a little ride along at the Tournament of Roses Parade in 1960. Richard Nixon was Vice President at the time and was Grand Marshal. Not resist showing some very funny campaign buttons for Richard Nixon. These were actual buttons from the campaigns. And roll them. <laughs> yes. This was a late TV. This was an RCA television. And roll them. Yes. And there's the debate. The presidential election. When he lost in 1960. You know, the age of Nixon. 
strong, brave, unafraid of controversy, unyielding in his convictions, delivering every day of his life to the hill. I believe the largest figure of our time, the influence will be timeless. That was Richard Nixon. Come true as well. You will suffer disappointment in life, and sometimes you will be very discouraged. It is sad to lose, but the greatest sadness is to travel through life without knowing either victory or defeat. At some of the low points in the past, I had been sustained by recalling a note handed me right after Watergate first broke. Nixon's birthplace is right there. And this is a rainy day in California. It's that time of the year when the roses are starting to come back. And this is the First Lady's Rose Garden. And uh, here's where they were buried right next to the Rose Garden. I'm gonna walk out here in the mud because that's what they got. It's Pat Nixon. The greatest honor history can bestow is the title of Peacemaker. Henry Kissinger is shown here at the funeral giving a speech and there are five United States presidents present during that time. And so we took one like this at the Reagan Library. So it's fitting that we take one at the Nixon Library as well. And this is the birthplace home which normally you can walk through but you can't during the rain because they don't want it anybody wet on the inside. Since he was a big fan of Lincoln, there's also a statue of Lincoln out here too. place home and we can walk on down the path and they have a Marine One helicopter at the far end of the property. This sculpture was erected in tribute to Nixon signing the Endangered Species Act of 1973 to conserve and protect endangered and threatened species and their habitats both domestically and abroad. The Nixon administration initiated many of the most important and enduring environmental policies in American history. It's located right on Yorba Linda Boulevard but it's it's actually a very nice park setting that they've got set up with the house and the, the helicopter in the gravesite. Kind of cool you can walk over to it. Can't get in it. But you can see it up close and personal. No photography allowed in the helicopter. And in the rain again. You cannot go inside of the helicopter. But this is a much smaller helicopter than the last one that we went in. And this is the type that was used during Nixon's time in office. And you can see this, the seal of the president right there on the helicopter behind us.
Her cutter is closed in the rain. But we'll take the picture anyway. The waving one. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, go ahead, stand over there. Like what? Like you're gonna take off. There you go. Or you can stand here next to Abe. the Prez. Abe. <laughs> hey, Abe. You can ask, act honest. Act, act, act honest. Honest <laughs> Abe. <laughs> Your last look at a very beautiful grave site of the 37th President of the United States. In July of 1999, Buzz Aldrin came and walked in moon boots across the concrete in tribute to the Apollo 11 moon landing of 1969. So you can get a real boot print from a boot that's been on the moon. Shopping. Oh, shopping. <laughs> There's a did you know on the trip. If you enjoyed our vlog, please subscribe. And ring that notification bell. And give us a like. It lets us know you care. And we'll see you on the next one. And hopefully I held this steady enough because they won't let me have a selfie stick. So and subscribe. We need your support for more of these great videos. We hope you enjoyed this one and we will see you on the next one bye bye